All right, what's up guys? Welcome to Power Moves with Too Tall Toby. And today I am very excited because today we get to talk about the enhancement of the century, the S-Key Shortcut Toolbar. Ow! So I know that intro might have seemed like it was a little over the top, but when I think about how much time I've saved by learning how to efficiently use the S key, I really feel like it's warranted. So let's get into it and talk about it here. I'm gonna start out by going to the front plane in SolidWorks, beginning a sketch, and then on my keyboard, I'm gonna press the letter S. And this initiates what's called the S key shortcut menu. So you can see that wherever I move my mouse, if I just press the S key, the menu shows up right there, right there wherever my mouse is. And so I'm gonna start out by clicking the line command and I'm gonna come over here and create a line like so. And then I'm gonna hit escape, I'm gonna press the S key and I'm gonna make an arc. So right from that same menu, you can see that I can create lines, I can create arcs. I can maybe create another line here that comes over like so and then a line that comes down. I can press the S key and jump into the smart dimension command. So all these commands are just right there waiting for me when I'm in sketch mode and I press the letter S on my keyboard. But now I wanna turn this into a feature. So I'm gonna press the S key again and I'm gonna choose this command here, exit sketch. And now I'm no longer working in sketch mode, but instead I'm working in feature mode within a part. So now when I press the S key, the menu is a little different. And this is the cool thing about the S key is that it's actually four different toolbars depending on whether you're in sketch mode or feature mode or assembly mode or drawing mode. So here in feature mode, when I press the S key, you'll see that we can turn this into a boss face extrusion. And now on this front face, I could select the face, begin a sketch, and I could press the S key, jump into maybe the circle command, press the S key, jump into the smart dimension command and give that a diameter. And then I could press the S key and I could exit the sketch. And then I could press the S key again and jump right into the cut extrude command. Maybe I could even press the S key out here and jump into the fillet command. And so I could add a fillet here on this edge and add a fillet down here on this edge. Now, this is really cool in and of itself. All these valuable shortcuts are available from one single keyboard shortcut. I don't have to go through and map out a bunch of custom key bindings, but it gets even better. And the reason why is because this functionality is customizable. And what I mean is I could go to the front plane here, begin a sketch and press the S key, and then I can do a right mouse button and I can choose customize. And this is where you can really start leveraging the S key functionality. One thing that I don't like about the out of the box S key menu is that the line and center line are buried in this fly out menu. So what I'm gonna do is a right mouse button, choose customize, and then I'm gonna get rid of that flyout menu. So I'm gonna get take this line flyout menu and just drag it into the background. And I'm gonna do the same thing with rectangle. And instead, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go down here into this selection of menus. I don't wanna get this from the flyout toolbar, but I wanna get it from the sketch toolbar. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a unique icon or a standalone icon for line and a standalone icon for corner rectangle and a standalone icon for center rectangle and a standalone icon for center line. Now, the other thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna resize this S key menu. The way I've got mine set up usually looks like this and that's just personal preference, but it's good to be consistent because it'll help you develop things like muscle memory. So now when I'm working in sketch mode and I press the S key, I can quickly go into the corner rectangle command. I don't have to access it from a flyout menu. I could drop in a rectangle here like so, and then I can quickly jump into the center line command because it's a standalone icon here on my S key menu. And I can quickly jump into the circle command and create a nice fully defined sketch here. Now what I wanna do next is turn this into a boss extrude, but I don't wanna to have to exit the sketch and then launch the boss extrude command. That takes too much time. What's cool is that even though I'm working in sketch mode here, I can go to customize and I can add feature commands to my S key menu in sketch mode. And that means I can add the command for boss extrude and I can add the command for cut extrude. And what we're looking at on screen here is the typical setup that I, Too Tall Toby, use for my S key menu in sketch mode. Because what this means is that when I'm working in sketch mode, I can press the S key and I can jump right into the boss extrude command and turn this thing into some solid geometry. Now, 
Just like we can customize the S key in sketch mode, we can also customize the S key in feature mode. So you'll notice here that when I look at this thing in feature mode, the menu looks a little bit different. Here's what the menu looks like in sketch mode. Here's what the menu looks like in feature mode. Here's what it looks like in assembly mode. And here is what it looks like in drawing mode. There's some great commands that are built right into this toolbar, like the fillet command is extremely useful and it's great to know that I don't have to make a custom key binding for fillet. I can just remember that it's right there on my S key menu. Jump in here and make some fillets on this part real quickly. But there's also some commands that you may feel are missing. Like if you do a lot of uh, plastics design, you might be looking for the shell command to be right here on your S key menu. Well, once again, we can do a right mouse button customize and from the customize command we can say we want to customize the feature s key shortcut menu to include the feature for shell and that way once we get to this point in the design we can just press the s key choose shell type in the wall thickness and then choose the faces to remove I mentioned a moment ago that there are some very useful shortcuts built right into the out of the box S key in feature mode. And one of those is the plane command. I use this a lot. We go down here to reference geometry plane from the S key menu, and we can pick these two faces and make a new plane that's at exactly at the center of those two faces. Or we could pre-select a face, press the S key, go to the plane command, type in an offset distance like four millimeters and flip that so that that plane is now existing four millimeters buried down into the top of that part. But as you can see here, whether you're working with the out of the box shortcuts or working with customized shortcuts, the S key is extremely useful. But hey, I work a lot with sheet metal. I'm not really seeing too much sheet metal functionality here in the S key menu. Well, that's no problem. Let's say we make a new part here. I'll make this in plain carbon steel. And we start out with a sketch of a rectangle. So I press the S key, create a rectangle here. I'll make this 40 by 120. And then I'll say that I want this top line to be for construction. Now I can press the S key again, and I can go and add the most common sheet metal command for sketch mode, which is the base flange tab command. So I go down here to my sheet metal tools and from the sheet metal tools I'm going to add the base flange tab command right onto my S key menu in sketch mode. That means when I get to this point of the design I can just press the S key, jump into base flange tab and turn this thing into a base flange. What about at the feature level? Well once again I can do an S key right mouse button customize and I can maybe add the sheet metal tools that I would typically use at the feature level. So that might be the edge flange command. I think I'm going to probably be using that a lot. And maybe the flatten command. That could probably be useful to have right here at my fingertips. So now I could pre-select this edge, press the S key, go into the edge flange command, and drop in a new edge flange sticking down here. And then when I want to look at this sheet metal design in the flat, I just press the S key and jump right into the flat pattern. How cool is that? Finally, we want to remember that these menus are different depending on which mode we're working in. So for example, at the assembly mode, I'm not going to see the S key functionality for edge flange or for a sketched rectangle, but I am going to see some really useful functionality like the make command or this guy here, insert component, which I use all the time. So I can just press the S key, insert component, browse for the component that I want to add to my assembly, drop it in and continue with my design process. The S key is such a great time saver because it just shows up wherever your mouse is. You just move your mouse around, you press the S key and it shows up because it can be customized for your workflow and because it's different depending on which of the four modes you're working in in SolidWorks. And for all those reasons, I consider the S key the enhancement of the century. But let me know down in the comments below, what do you think about this video? What do you think about the S key? And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to give me a like, be sure to give me a subscribe, be sure to share this video with other SolidWorks enthusiasts that you know, and of course, tune back in for the next episode of Power Moves.